All right. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. I uh, hope that your big feasts <laughs> were great this year. Um, just to let you know, at the end of the service, we're going to have a video montage of different things from this fall, so stay tuned for that. Um, but now it's time to move on towards Christmas. So no more Happy Thanksgiving, now it's Merry Christmas. And we've got two Christmassy things right here at the beginning. Uh, one is to remember that we have Dramatic Dessert Home Edition. And if I get a picture of that up there, I forgot to tell you guys that I'm going to do that, but uh, happy, uh, Chris, Merry Christmas, and we're going to be doing the, the Christmas Dramatic Dessert Home Edition. And I'm just thinking, um, if you think about your friends and neighbors and family members, how much they've lost this year. I mean, there's no concerts, whether professional ones or school ones. I'm kind of glad there's no school ones, <laughs> but there's none of those. There's no festival of lights. There's no uh, Saturday market. There's no parades. We don't have parades, but we don't have any of those things going on. You can't even go to a restaurant or have a, a company party. Uh, it, it's all gone for you and for them. So what a blessing you can be to them to say, hey, we're going to have a small but safe and tasty and quality party for you in our home. So really look at it that way, that you're blessing them by giving them something in replacing all their traditions that they have going on. So that's coming up. Now, if you go to our uh, website, uh, powellchurch.org, you will find that um, already a registration form there for, uh, for that. So register and then pay up and then plan that party. Second thing is, we're going to sing some actual songs that have to do with, uh, with Christmas uh, this year. Um, if I can have the next slide up there, I'll show you this. We've got songs like this, um, God With Us, or Emmanuel, one of the blessings of the incarnation of Christmas, God With Us. And that's just a statement that we have a, you know, of course, God's everywhere, so of course he's with us, but this is with us, as in a relationship with us. Uh, we're going to sing a song called I Am Loved. Talk about that relationship as a loving relationship. And then another new song, which I think is quite interesting, but basically makes the point that we are not perfect people. We don't do things right. We don't behave well. We don't deserve that relationship, but it's not about us. It's about him. And he relates and lovingly relates to us because of who he is. That's a blessing for all of us. It's an amazing thing. But the sobering thought at, at Christmas is there are people in your life, uh, your friends, your family members, acquaintances, who do not have God with them. Not that, God, again, God is, God is everywhere, but they don't have a relationship with him. They don't and haven't accepted his love for them. They haven't realized that. They haven't come to him. And so what a privilege it is for us to think that we might be useful to God in bringing the gospel to them so that they can have this great thing that we have. Um, that's where we have that idea of who's your one. Who is that person that is on your heart that the Holy Spirit has revealed to you that you need to be praying for and reaching out towards? Think of that because uh, Christmas time is a great one uh, for reminding us of everything we have and what other people don't have but we want them to have. So we hope that we can sing God with us and say God with us, but also God with others out there who have become part of us. Let's sing that together.
Good morning. I hope that your Thanksgiving was great, and I'm going to give you a chance to go ahead and say what you're thankful for this morning to somebody sitting around you. Now, I know you're going to maintain your distance, so it'll take a minute, but for people at home, you can go up and squeeze your mom and dad's neck and tell them how much you appreciate them and how thankful you are for them. So go ahead and take a minute or two and do that. We are going to do a new song. It has a very interesting title. It's called, O Come All Ye Unfaithful. And it is about how those of us who are broken and those of us who um, sometimes feel like we can't measure up, God draws us and he calls us. That's Emmanuel, God with us. And it's because of his uh, great love for us that Jesus came. And it makes it possible for us to enter into a relationship with him. So let's go ahead and, and sing this. As it becomes familiar, you can join us.
in a world that's changing, and it's changing rapidly around us, it's, it's so comforting to know that God is changing us from the inside out. And what happens around us doesn't need to affect that relationship, except draw us maybe deeper into a relationship with him, because we are so loved. And he says, just as you are, come to me. I am changing everything, and I want to work in your life. So join us as we sing, I am loved. We are moving from Thanksgiving into the Christmas season, but I just wanted to, uh, before we go to prayer, uh, you know, we had things, we're, we're in the Thanksgiving 
weekend still, the Thanksgiving holiday weekend, because a lot of people are, were off work, and so we're continuing on. But, so we had lots of things to be thankful for. A lot of people enumerated the things they were thankful for. You know, that's pretty easy to do, too, when you had a roof over your head, you had food on the table, but is it easy to be thankful when things are hard? People are sick. You've got a cancer diagnosis. You've lost your job. Can we still be thankful? Yes, we can, because we as believers know God. And it's, been, it's really interesting this morning because the pastor talked about those that don't have that. Uh, we talked about God with us, and there are people that don't have God. First Chronicles 16, chapter 1, starting in verse 8. Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord in his strength, seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles, and the judgments he pronounced. You, his servants, the descendants of Israel, his chosen ones, the children of Jacob. Would you join me as we go to prayer? Father, we, we are thankful for the many things that, um, that we do have. And Father, we're also thankful for those times that we can rely on you when things are tough, when things are good and when things are not so good. And we just thank you and praise you for that. Father, we pray for our world. We pray for our country. We pray for our state. Uh, Father, we pray for our leaders, and we just ask that uh, there would be a real turning to you, that they would seek your wisdom in decisions and things that they do. Father, we pray for um, the first responders. We pray for those uh, health care providers, all those who are on the front lines dealing daily with the coronavirus, and we ask that you would be with those that have uh, contacted the disease, contracted the disease, that you would help them to heal, uh, recover quickly, and ha have no residual effects from that. Uh, Father, we especially uh, think of those in our congregation who are uh, facing, you know, heavy burdens, uh, that are sick, facing procedures, uh, surgeries, are recovering. We just ask again that you'd be with them, strengthen them, help them to recover. And Father, we specifically want to remember Joyce's grandfather this morning who's hospitalized. We just ask that you'll be with the doctors and uh, nurses and others that are caring for him, help him to recover quickly, and just uh, comfort the family. Father, we just ask you to be with us this morning as we continue in song and worship and as we hear your word preached. In Jesus' name, amen.
Uh, turn your eyes upon Jesus. That's a, that's a, a, a great reminder to us. Uh, it reminded me of an illustration that uh, I uh, ran across, and I couldn't find it again. I was looking for it, but it was about uh, a young boy who lived on a farm, and um, there came a time when uh, his uh, dad and him were riding a, uh, uh, or driving a wagon home, and um, his father said, son, would you like to take the reins? And so he had it on. Of course, any boy would love to drive a car, and I guess in those days would love to drive a wagon. So he takes off, and his father just stands, sits there uh, beside him as he, as he just takes off down the road. And, and as they're going around, he's, he's getting more comfortable with this new idea of, of, of uh, driving the horses. And so he, he does the thing, which I know about because I've seen westerns, you know, and, uh, and all of a sudden the horses start to go faster. And he's, he's excited about that. But then he's thinking, eh, this is a little bit fast, but I think I could go faster. So again, and, and the horses take off. And he looks at his father. The father's just looking around at the fields and everything. And off they go, and pretty soon it's, 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 the horses are starting to go faster because they're thinking, we're going home. We're going home back to the hay. So, and he's thinking, this is, this is getting kind of scary, but he looks at his dad, and his dad just sitting there calmly looking out at the fields, and, and yet he says, I, I gotta stop. he thinks to himself, I've got to stop this. So he tries to rein them in, which is where we get that idea, rein him in. But horses, because uh, they recognize he's small or not in control or doesn't know what to do, they don't, they don't pay any attention to it. They just keep going faster and faster. Now, starting to bump around a little bit, he looks at his dad, and his dad is still just sitting there just <laughs> looking at the sky. And, and the little boy is just kind of like, oh, he's getting really scared. And so finally he says, here, I don't want to drive anymore. <laughs> And his father takes things under control. I thought, well, that's maybe what we need in this world. When our lives are bumping around and we're getting all scared, we need to say, here, I don't want to drive anymore and just give it over to him. Now, I thought of another illustration that happened to another little boy who was me, uh, which is similar but very different, in which a family friend invited us all to go snowmobiling with them. And I, I loved that, and, and when it was in Wenatchee, and you know, out in the snow, and it, fun snowmobiling. I didn't know much about snowmobiles, except that they were really fun. And so I rode on the back as we went, and you know, in the inner tube behind. But at one point he said, uh, Mark, would, would you like to drive? It's like, yeah. So I'm in third grade or something like that. And, and uh, so I got to sit in front of him. A family friend was uh, behind me, which as you'll find out, it was very thankful that he was. Um, and I, you know, he explained how the throttle worked. And I guess I must have a brake or something, I forget. But uh, I understand the throttle part very well. So uh, we were driving along, and, uh, and it was kind of fun. So I was going a little bit faster, you know, as the little boy in the wagon did. And, and then I began to think, this is too fast. And, and so I, uh, I, I, I panicked. And, and you know what I do when I panic is tense up. So I squeezed really hard on the throttle, which meant we were going faster and faster. And I can still picture in my mind that slash pile that was ahead of us the whole pile of wood there. We were going we were gonna to crash and probably die, you know, or something like that. And he's like, Mark, take your, take your hand off the throttle, but... <laughs> and he had to pry my hands off of the handlebars in order to stop the, the snowmobile and keep us from certain death. And that's where I think sometimes we say, God, here, <laughs> you drive. Other times, he has to pry our hands off the throttle, and uh, he has a good way of doing that. I'm thankful for a loving Heavenly Father who doesn't just sit in the, in the seat next to us and wait for us to give it over to him. Sometimes he takes direct action and pries the reins out of our hands. Amen? Mm -hmm. Okay, as Randy said, we're still in Thanksgiving weekend, so Thanksgiving still counts. So this is the time we usually have a Thanksgiving sermon, and usually I do something like, you know, have little prayer groups or have everyone share, but it's kind of hard to share when, uh, you know, when we're all masked up and distanced and all that. So I'm going to do something a little bit different, uh, a little unconventional. I want to talk about uh, being unthankful. Um, being unthankful is actually... Uh, it's a pretty popular hobby. Uh, you know, we have Thanksgiving in America, and I guess they have Thanksgiving in Canada too, and probably other countries have Thanksgiving as a special day to give thanks. But really, when you look around at people around you, there's a lot of unthankful people on the other 364 days of the year. And as a matter of fact, we're often those unthankful people. We, we don't give thanks. And, and that's, a, that's a hard thing to do, to be unthankful, because God has blessed us so much. I mean, we live in the Pacific Northwest, 
And even when the trees have lost all their leaves, it's still beautiful. And even when it's rainy, it's still beautiful. This is a beautiful part of the country. Have you been to some of the other states? I mean, we are very privileged. And we live in a civilization that is, uh, uh, has all kinds of resources. In, in America, our country, we are so rich and wealthy. We have so many comforts and so many entertainments and, and so much stuff and, and so much food, too much food. We have all these kinds of things. We have family and we have friends and we have, uh, we, and of course, most important of all, we have salvation through Jesus Christ, our Savior, which gives us access and, and uh, family status with our Heavenly Father and gives us the Holy Spirit within us. So we are greatly blessed. And sometimes having all those blessings makes it really hard to be unthankful. So I wanted to give you a few tips on how to be unthankful in the midst of all these blessings. So here we go. Number one, practice negativity. Uh, look for, I mean, try to find frustrations, annoyances, things to complain about, things to grumble about. You, you have to work for it a little bit, but if you work at it, you can do it. Um, I remember talking to Chuck Curtis once, and as you know, he's going through some cancer treatments, leukemia, and I, I asked him, so how are you doing? And he said, can't complain. Well, I'm thinking, that's just lazy. I mean, if you really work at it, you can find stuff to complain at. And that's, that's the key. You got to work at it, find things to complain about. Um, use, and, and when you do complain, use extreme words like horrible, bad, use always or never or whatever else you can. And above all, practice, practice, practice. Practice makes imperfect. So if you work hard at it, you will be unthankful. Um, you know, there are thankful people in this world, but they're just not paying attention. They're just not paying attention to all the things they could be unthankful for. So work at that. Number two, practice distraction. As you go through your day, you're going to find many things that you might possibly enjoy and could be tempted to be thankful about, like sitting down for a, a good meal or, or, or having a conversation with someone or taking a walk or reading a book or just having a quiet time of prayer. And um, if you're not careful, you will end up being thankful. So the thing to do is make sure that you don't simply enjoy things. Don't, don't just enjoy what you're doing. Always multitask. So when you're eating a meal, it's a good thing to eat your meal, but also remember all the bad things that have happened in the past. Or when you're in a conversation with someone, it's a good idea to distract yourself by, you know, we got great phones now. So, you know, you can talk to them, but also keep track of what's going on on Pinterest and Facebook. So that'll keep you from maybe enjoying the conversation. And you can pray, but as you pray, also worry a lot about the future and how God might not answer your prayers the way you want him to. If you do all those things, you will um, miss out on the thankful part of the things that you could enjoy. So, practice distraction. Um, practice poor health. Um, try, if you can, to be tired at all times. So, stay up late, you know, too late, and um, don't um, ever take any time off, and, and never unplug. Always be going, because you'll be exhausted. And exhausted people are, are usually not very thankful. Um, also, at the same time, make sure you keep yourself as stressed as possible. So sign up for too many things. Uh, say yes to everything and to everyone. Um, also, procrastinate. Procrastination is great because you can worry about what you haven't done yet and then put it off until it becomes even worse and that will really weigh you down. And then also... Um, go to bed late, but also get up too late, because the hurried you, you are, the more stressed you are, the, the better. And at the same time, while you're being stressed, also remember, remember to remain as sedentary as possible. So yes, stress, but also just sit there, okay? Don't, don't do things. Don't actually accomplish things. Just get, stay there. Don't walk. Don't exercise. One of the terrible things about our bodies is when you do some movement and stuff like that, you release all these terrible chemicals called endorphins, and they're just, oh, they're so bad for your unthankfulness. So don't do that. Just stay where you are, and uh, that way you feel, feel even worse. And then also stuff, and we just passed Thanksgiving. Just do that, every day. Uh, uh, eat until you have to loosen your belt up. Eat until it hurts. 
um, if you if you eat a lot of food, you'll stay sluggish and, and unmotivated. So just something good tips there on unthankfulness. Practice self-centeredness. Just as a general principle, remember that you are the center of the universe. It is all about you. So let's think particularly of prayer. When you pray, when you pray, you could spend a little bit of time on praise, but honestly, why? I mean, number one, God, is, God knows how great he is. He doesn't need you to tell him that. And number two, praising God is not about you. So misses the point completely. Also, don't spend a lot of time talking with other people about uh, how they might have needs because, again, that's not about you. Uh, think about yourself. Thanksgiving, well, that's straight out. You don't want to be doing that because though you do have things, there are so many things you don't have. Those are the things you need to key on. Ask God for stuff. Ask, ask, ask. Think about all the things you don't have and then ask for them. You know, when I was a kid, we used to take the, the Sears catalog and go through and give a Christmas list to mom and dad, which they never paid any attention to. But nevertheless, we tried. And basically, we'd say page 73, everything on that page. Page 74, everything on that page. 75, everything. we just go through it like that, basically. And, and do that with God. Just ask for everything and anything. Um, and then also, when he doesn't give you what you ask for, make sure you complain or even accuse him of not being a good God, because after all, he did not give you what you asked for. And don't give him any wiggle room. Don't say, if it be your will, don't even have that in your head. Demand. And number five, practice journaling. Keep yourself an ungrateful journal. Just think of all the peeves you have, especially the pet ones, the annoying things people do, the imperfections in their character or their behavior, times when people made you late or when service wasn't right on, when anyone said something that might have been taken in a wrong way, um, anytime you have an unmet expectation or anything that bugs you about people, take that and, and write that down. Try to write, you know, a dozen of those. Oh yeah, someone showed me a notebook they're writing in right now about me. So yes, write down those things at least a dozen a day. You know, you really got to work hard on it. Um, and, and even go for small things. It doesn't have to be big, small, just again, you're making a habit of this. And, and if you can personalize it, the, the people who are closest to you and that you love the most, think about ways they bug you. And, and if you work at it, Number one, you'll find things that bug you. Number two, you'll find new things that'll bug you. They'll say things and do things that you didn't even notice bugged you before, but now they will. You'll get really good at it. And if you're ever tempted to backslide into thankfulness, just whip that journal out, read a few entries, and that'll help you. In fact, you might even take and write some of those unthankful things on post-it notes and put them around your house so that you'll always remember to be unthankful. All right, in case anyone is, is wondering, uh, that was uh, facetious. Okay, so uh, you know what that means? That means don't take that seriously. I, I would hate for anyone to misunderstand that. Because unthankfulness, though it's very popular, is, is wrong. It is bad. In fact, it's real bad. I was reading here in Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1 is all about, uh, Paul goes through there from uh, verse 15 or 16, 17 on and talks about the depravity of people without God and how sinful and, and horrible they become in their character and in, in their being. And, and he goes through a whole bunch of things and you think, what is, what is the most depraved? What's the foundational thing? And you think, well, maybe it's some sort of sexual immorality. Well, that is in there or maybe it's murder yeah that's in here but here's how it starts in romans 1 21 here's how he starts the list although they knew god they neither glorified him as god nor gave thanks to him but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened and that's just the beginning but where does it start they didn't glorify god and they were unthankful for the things that he had given them that means that's pretty bad that's kind of a root problem that's like a horrible thing um yeah there's a bunch of other bad things on the list but here's where it starts unthankfulness ungratefulness for the things he's already done for us philippians chapter 2 paul gives instructions to another group of people and he says this do do everything without complaining or arguing 
so that you may become blameless and pure, uh, the children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe. What, what great advice, what great commands for us. But turn it around the other way, and, and it's, it becomes a warning. Because if we do things with complaining or arguing, it kind of flows from that, that if we're complaining, which is, of course, the opposite of thanksgiving, complaining is just a way of being unthankful. When we do that, we become blameful. Is that a word? We become guilty. Uh, we become uh, impure. Uh, we're not acting as the children of God that we actually are. We become people with fault. And as a matter of fact, we become just like the crooked and depraved generation in which we live. Which means when we complain, we aren't different. We don't act like who we are. We aren't lights. We don't shine. And we aren't a witness. A terrible thing about unthankfulness. Not only is it, it bad because it puts us in the wrong relationship with God, but it also affects people around us that we're supposed to be shining to. So instead, uh, what Paul is saying here is don't complain, be thankful, so you will be different. You will be like the children of God that you're supposed to be. You will be a light. You will shine. You'll be a great witness, a great advertisement, if you will, for God and who he is. And then uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 16 through 18 says, um, be joyful, pray, give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And of course, in each one of these commands, there's an added uh, kind of an infinite addition to it. Be joyful always. Of course, he doesn't say be glad about everything. That would be, that wouldn't work. But be joyful in whatever circumstance you find yourself. I think Randy had mentioned that in his prayer that because we have a, we have a connection with God. So no matter how bad things are, we still have something to be optimistic about, right? We always have something that we can find joy in, even in the worst. Um, be joyful always. Pray continually. I like that because it's a recognition that we need to pray. Of course, praise and thanksgiving, but also to ask for things. Um, and we're supposed to do that on a continual basis, always be in relationship with him, always be in, in contact, and give thanks in all circumstances, it's a good translation of the preposition there because it doesn't, doesn't really truly mean give thanks for everything. Uh, there are some things that happen that are just plain bad. They're part of us living in a sinful, fallen world, in which case we'd say this is not a good thing and I don't give thanks for this in particular, but I do give thanks in these circumstances because I know God is in control and because God has already given so much. God's will for us is that there would never be a thankless, joyless, prayerless moment. Uh, that would be a wonderful thing for us to aspire to. And then, last verse here, Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Now, this verse, more than even the one previously, acknowledges that things are not perfect here in this world. Did you notice that this week? I mean, I was very enthusiastic to hear that things are going to be changing, even for critical counties coming up, because it means that our service next Sunday will be different. Today, we were doing a service of 25, and then at 11, we're doing a, another service of 25. It looks like we won't have to do that next week, because our numbers will be uh, vastly expanded, and we'll let you know about that as it comes out, but it, uh, it, that's a great thing. So that was good news, but there was also some other news that happened this week, a whole bunch of it. Uh, it just kept coming and coming, and it will be in the next week, and it always will be this way because we live in a fallen world. We're never going to reach that golden age in the United States in uh, America where we all sing the Coke song and everything is wonderful and harmony and, and all that. That's not going to happen. This is a fallen world, and we will always have needs. That, that, that's made implicit here in, in Philippians 4. He said, don't be anxious because there are plenty of things that will cause anxiety to arise in us. Um, in everything by prayer and specifically by petition, which is another word for asking God for stuff, because sometimes we ask out of selfish reasons, but oftentimes we ask because there are things we actually do need. 
um, and present your requests to God because there are some things we need to actually ask for and He needs to do for us. But in all that, puts that little phrase, with thanksgiving. Now, why will I be in need and in want and having things I have to ask for and still have thanksgiving? Well, I think there's a couple of reasons. Number one, because I know that I'm speaking to my heavenly Father and He answers prayer. So even as I'm praying and asking for things, I can say, I thank you that you're going to answer this prayer. Always being careful that we realize he answers in his way, in his time, according to his plan, not according to our Sears Roebuck Christmas shopping list. Uh, He's the God that answers prayer in his sovereign way. So there's what I'm thankful for. And you know, it's, it's, It is actually a blessing that God doesn't answer all our prayers the way we want them answered because we ask amiss oftentimes and we don't even have a clue about what's coming up next in our story and we might ask for something and he says, that is not going to work out too well. And it turns out God's always right. We also give thanks because he's already answered our prayers in the past. Um, I hope you have a list in your mind or maybe like the journal thing written down somewhere where you think this is where God what God has already done for me and when I think about my life God has already done so much for me that if he didn't answer another prayer for the rest of my life and that's not the way he's going to do it but even if he did do that he has already done so much for me what what would I really have to complain about and not only that there are so many things he's given me that I didn't even ask for He just handed them off to me. I didn't ask to live in Oregon, but here I am. I I didn't ask to have this much or to have this. I did ask for this wife. Yeah, I did ask for that. Correct me on that one. Uh, I didn't ask for four grandkids. I just wanted, I don't know how many I wanted. Well, more now. Now I'm I'm getting greedy. I want more. Uh, But, uh, you know, I didn't ask for a lot of things. You didn't ask for a lot of blessings that you you gave. I think um, uh, Joan in our prayer time was talking about listing a thousand things as a goal a thousand things to be thankful for and at first you think thousand that's a big number but if you looked at the federal deficit that's a very small number and yet a thousand things is not really a stretch really is it i mean it just takes some time but yeah i think a thousand things would be uh, uh easy thing to do so we give thanks in all time at all times because he will answer because he has answered and because he does so much more than even we could ask or imagine So, looking back at our five things, let's uh, take the un part off of there and say, just in case you're wondering, journaling is a really good idea, but don't write down unthankful things. Write down thankful things. Um, That's a good thing to have. I have a little family book that I keep, and it just writes down, I write things down uh, on a daily basis, but I don't know if that's really journaling, but writing some things in there that we can look back and say, thankful for that. Here's another blessing. That's that's a good thing to have because we're so forgetful. Um, Practice not self-centeredness, but other-centeredness. Think about other people. Of course, we think about ourselves. Can't help it because this is who we are. But consciously looking and centering on other people, and when I say other, not just other people, but on God himself, giving thanks for him, and what he does for us and relating to him. Practice good health. So all the things about not sleeping enough and being stressed and being sedentary. There was another S in there somewhere. Oh, being stuffed. Uh, Do the opposite of those things uh, because uh, good health is a good way to take care of who we are and be thankful. And number two, practice attention. I mean... Have you ever sat down to eat a meal and then a few minutes later you said, wait, where did it all go? Because you didn't even enjoy it. Have you ever had a conversation with someone and they had to kind of go snap their fingers? I wish I could snap my fingers because you drifted off to somewhere else or you got caught up in a Facebook dialogue. You know, just today is a great, it's sunny today. It's going to be sunny for the next six months or six minutes. It's going to be sunny. You should enjoy that. You should enjoy the good things that God gives when they're there. Um, 
You don't always have to be stressing out and thinking about what's going to happen in the future or what I need to do now. Just sometimes just sit back and enjoy the things God has given us because he's given us quite a bit. And lastly, practice positivity. Um, it's not that you shouldn't be a realist and realize there are things in this life that are not good and things that have to be met by you and by others, of course. But practice positivity. Look for the brighter side. Look for the good things. Look for what? There's plenty of things to find. You know, started off by saying it, it's hard to be unthankful. But it really isn't. It, dis- it, it, it is easy to be unthankful. Not because God is not good. Not because there aren't a thousand things to be thankful for. That's not why it's easy to be unthankful. It's easy to be unthankful because we're sinful people who are broken and selfish and and see things the wrong way and get it all messed up in our heads. It's easy to be unthankful because we're sinners. But it's easy to be thankful if we get beyond that and say, wait a minute, God who has redeemed me has given me so many things that I need to focus and concentrate on. Let's go ahead and say a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this Thanksgiving weekend. (laughs) This uh, this Thanksgiving was different than every Thanksgiving before. And of course, they're all different, but just the, the, the mandates that we've been under and some of the things we've had, to, some of the hoops we've had to go through. Um, but Lord, that, that doesn't sour us on giving thanks because there is so much that we can give thanks for. Lord, I, I say something which is abundantly obvious to all of us when we think about it, that you are a good God and you've given us so many good things. Lord, I don't want to minimize the pain and the problems of our lives. I don't want to say that those things don't matter or they're silly. They're not. They're significant. It's part of living in this sinful world. But in spite of that, and and by the testimony of people in severe suffering, I I can say this, that you are always good, and you always give plenty of things for us to be thankful for. Now help us to be those kinds of thankful people. Help us to resist the urge to be unthankful. Help us to throw away our ungrateful journals and time and again come back to how good you have been to us. You are a good God. You are always good. You have always been good. You will always be good. Thank you. Thank you. And I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our greatest blessing. Amen. Thank you. You are dismissed. video. You're not dismissed. Stay here.